Good news, sellers. You don't have to offer a buyer's agent commission anymore when selling your home, even though technically you never had to. And here's why offering a buyer's agent commission is a very bad idea in this low inventory market. First of all, not offering a buyer agent commission is going to give you more time to sell your home. Buyers who have been working with loyal agents for a year, sometimes longer, will not be able to leverage their mortgage to pay top dollar for your home, which by the way, would cover the cost of the buyer's agent's commission. If I were to ask a recent seller where they obtained the money that they were paid for their home, they would inevitably come to the conclusion that a buyer paid them the money for their home. Where'd the buyer get the money? Usually from a bank who provided the loan. If you do not offer to pay the buyer's agent commission, which would have allowed the buyer to leverage their mortgage to pay top dollar for the home, you are actually able to limit the pool of buyers who are willing and able to pay top dollar for the home. That will reduce competition among represented buyers and allow your home to sit on the market for longer, which will give you more time to prepare for your move. Next, you can actually reduce the chaotic bidding wars and simplify accepting an offer. With buyers already having to cover appraisal gaps and down payments out of pocket, if buyers are expected to come out of their own pocket for the buyer's agent commission and not be able to leverage their mortgage, those bidding wars will go from wars to small battles and likely turn into friendly contests as fewer offers are made, making it much simpler to choose an offer from a smaller stack of weaker offers. Next, you actually have the opportunity to go through the same home sale process several times. By accepting an offer from an unrepresented buyer who could not afford to pay a buyer's agent commission out of pocket, you get one entire side of the transaction that has zero guidance, and when they are caught off guard by a small issue, they turn to their dad who just says, don't buy that shit hole because he paid for his $1.2 million home with a basket of raspberries back in 1965 and doesn't like that a single outlet in the entire future home of yours is not grounded. When the buyer walks away from the transaction because of some non-issue like that, you get to start all over and relive cleaning and pulling your family out of the home for showings. Finally, you don't have to worry about carrying as heavy a bag of money around as you thought you would after you sell. When you were looking at the comps of all the homes that have allowed buyers to leverage their mortgage to cover the buyer agent commission, and then you limit the buyer's purchase power when you sell your home, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that generally people aren't going to be able to pay as much for your home, making it easier for you to tote a lighter bag of cash around after the sale closes. Hopefully this paints a clear picture of why you should avoid offering a buyer's agent commission out of the proceeds of your home sale. Good luck out there sellers, follow me for more tips.